All right, so we are brand new to Mac. This is a 15 inch MacBook Pro. We do not have an Apple ID. We do not know anything about iCloud. We are jumping in for the very first time in order to talk about iCloud and Apple IDs and all things related. So here we are at a screen that says iCloud. We got there through system preferences and we are going to click a button that says create Apple ID. Of course, in order to do this, we need an existing email address. In this instance, we're gonna use a, an address from Gmail or from Google. So we're just gonna select a birthday. We'll just put August 11th, and we'll select 1980, primarily because it's at the bottom of the list here, and that's just kind of fun to do. And we'll hit the next button, and it should say, yep, that's perfectly fine. So it asks for our first and last name. We'll just say our first name is test, and our last name is account just for fun. Put in an email address, uh, computer ADV 7810. Uh, what are we going to do at gmail.com? Apparently I added an extra space here that I don't need. It's going to ask for a password. Hopefully one that we use occasionally will actually work. We'll know momentarily. Don't worry, this is just a test account, so we're not too worried about you guys hacking it or using it. Setting this up primarily to talk about iCloud and Apple IDs. So it asks if we want Apple News and announcements. Man, eh, perfectly fine, we don't really care. Password is too simple, it can be easily guessed. Okay, so good to know. We'll add a couple of exclamation points at the end and see if that helps us. It must have liked that perfectly fine. Wants to know if we can have a uh, phone number to verify our account and then it will text us or call us. So we got a little code. We'll key that code in gives us a couple of terms and conditions. We will agree to those. And it's doing some kind of magic behind the scenes. Wants our password for the computer to make changes to get us set up. Type that in. It will continue setting up our brand new Apple ID on this computer. Our email address is not verified yet. We'll just log in and get over here to our Gmail. It's the first time we've used this Gmail account, so it's going to want us to go through this tutorial thing. I'll just close it. So here's where we got an email from Apple. All right, so we're in our Gmail. So this is wanting us to verify our email address. We will do that. Um, computer ADV 7810. We'll just click verify. We're going to send a code to that particular email address. So we'll go back to Safari, go back to our inbox. There's our code 710637. Uh, so we type that in. And just like magic, it's verified. You see, we have five gigs of space for free. And it looks like we are signed into the account. And then it comes up. iCloud Drive is checked automatically. Photos is turned on, gives you some options. Mail doesn't check itself automatically. We probably haven't set up an account in mail yet. Contacts, calendars, reminders, Safari, notes, and our keychain <coughs> are all set up so that they can indeed go to the cloud we can talk about back to mac and i'm on back at some other point we are signed into icloud for the very first time on this macbook pro we're going to just click on a couple of links just to explore this particular area in system preferences under account details once we click there we've got multiple tabs the first one just tells us what our Apple ID is, also 
says our name, we called ourselves Test Account. Under the Contact tab, we see our email address, we see the birthday that we set up, and our preferences. We are letting them send us announcements, certain things about Apple Music, iTunes, etc., and a few news updates. Under the Security tab, you see that we have two-factor authentication turned on. We also have a phone number there that is verified, meaning they sent us a code and we typed in that code. Shows us the devices that we are signed in on. We are signed in only on this device. And under the Payment tab, we don't have a payment method yet. We haven't signed into iTunes. We haven't given them a credit card. Uh, or anything of that nature. This particular account we're going to actually bring under a family sharing plan under another Apple ID so that it can share purchases and have the option to share other things under family sharing, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So that is everything under that tab in particular. Now, in iCloud, you we have iCloud Drive, Photos, Mails, Contacts, Calendars, Reminders, Safari, Notes, Keychain, and then back to my Mac and Find My Mac that we have the option of turning on. Under iCloud Drive, we have some options, so let's just look at the options under that tab. Uh, on your Mac, you have the option to automatically copy the desktop and document folder to iCloud those folders tend to grow larger than five gigabytes. So we don't have that checked right now because we don't have any iCloud storage above the five gigs they give you for free. Um, also, you have the option to store QuickTime stuff, pages, weather, and then uh, other things as you use those apps can show up here. And then look me up by email. Apps that allow people to look you up by your email or your Apple ID can be found in here. Of course, we don't have any set up right now. Under Photos, we also have some options. Obviously, we haven't used Photos on this Mac, but we'll look at the options for that. Basically, we can turn on iCloud Photo Library, which allows us to upload and store not just the photos from here in the cloud, but also photos from other devices in the cloud and have access to them on across all of our devices. Photo Stream lets you import them uh, automatically and iCloud Photo Sharing is also checked. Basically, we have the option of sharing particular albums with other people that use iCloud Photo. So basically, we can have uh, pictures in even a family sharing account that everybody in the family can contribute to that album. So in that particular album, we can see each other's pictures, etc. Fairly convenient, fairly simple, all tied to our Apple ID. Uh, mail, not checked right now. We check that, it's going to let us choose an iCloud email address for the very first time. So this is actually pretty neat. If we just type in our Apple ID here, computer ADV7810, um, it will create an iCloud email address for us there. It says we can't change it. Once we do this, it's done. We'll go ahead and say, yep, why not? And now mail is checked and we have, for the very first time, an iCloud.com email address. Contacts is checked. This is great and convenient. Pops up, it says, do we want to add iCloud to iMessage and FaceTime? If we want to be contacted via our iCloud email address through FaceTime and iMessage, we can click yes which we'll do for right now. Contacts, calendars, basically those are either off or on and you're using the cloud um, to sync those between devices. Super convenient. Almost everybody uses iCloud at least for contacts and calendars, sometimes reminders. Uh, Safari, uh, it will actually, between Safari and Safari, the keychain here, help you memorize certain other things across iCloud between devices. We'll talk about that later. Right now, it's not that important because uh, we have only one device signed in at the moment. Back to my Mac. When we check this, it turns this on and allows us to basically share something and get access to this Mac from outside. There's some networking uh, involved and 
some file sharing preferences that also have to be uh, turned on. I'm not going to worry about that right now. And then Find My Mac, much like Find My Phone, basically it's location services uh, related and can help you locate this Mac. This is one of those things if you are getting rid of a device, you have to turn off Find My Mac or Find My Phone because this locks this Apple device to your Apple ID. So very, very important to know that. And before you're selling or getting rid of a device to turn off Find My Mac, Find My Phone. Same thing if you're gonna send it in for service. Right now it says location services is off. We can click details. We can open security and privacy tab and actually um, turn on location services. Type in our password. It's unlocked. Now we can enable location services. And there's a few other privacy tabs in there. We can just kind of click through, but that's not uh, all important. So now Find My Mac is on, Location Services is on. Now, when we sign into iCloud.com from anywhere in the world with that uh, Apple ID that we're using, this computer ADV7810 at gmail.com Apple ID, we can actually see the location of this Mac the last time it hit the internet. That's actually fairly convenient. It also locks this Mac to that Apple ID.